In this lesson, I want you friends to be able to draw whatever you want. So in this video, you're going to see that I'm going to be drawing one of my favorite animals, which is a bat. And it's not because it's Halloween time or anything. I just really wanted to draw a bat for this. Um, again, I encourage you to draw whatever you want. So if you're into sports and you like soccer or basketball or baseball or football, maybe you could draw like a jersey or the sports equipment. Or if you have a favorite animal, draw it nice and big on a piece of paper um, like I am right here in the middle. I'm drawing my bat kind of big. Um, I could have drawn it a little bit bigger, but it's okay. Um, if you want to draw like a scene, maybe you want to draw yourself. Alright, so think about what you want to draw. I don't want anybody copying what I have to draw. I want everybody's to be different and unique. So I'm kind of just getting my lines all drawn out there. I'm starting with pencil because if I mess up, I can always erase. So like that, I'm erasing a little bit there, cleaning it up a little bit. All right, before we move on to our next step for our drawing, once you get your drawing done, we're gonna talk about geometric shapes versus organic shapes. So geometric shapes are shapes that, uh, ones that you can name. So like a triangle, a square, rectangle, circle, hexagon, trapezoid, those are geometric shapes. Now, when you think of organic shapes, Organic shapes are shapes that do not really have a name. So when you think of organic, what do you think of? Something that's natural, right? Maybe it doesn't have a structure. So organic shapes are made up shapes, basically. You can create them however you want. So a lot of mine are just squiggly, but you can draw them however you want. So that's geometric versus organic shapes. All right, for this next part, you're gonna want your ruler, all right? So the ruler is to help draw straight lines across your page. This will help us create some geometric shapes that we just talked about, all right? Now I'm drawing very lightly. You're gonna wanna draw lightly when you're doing this next step with our lines, with our ruler. So make sure you have your pencil and you draw lightly. Now it doesn't have to be straight across from one edge to another. I started um, some from one edge to another uh, with a line, not just from the edge of the paper. And I'm creating different geometric shapes. So you can see here I have some triangles, right? a lot of straight edge shapes. I guess you could call some of those organic shapes as well too. 
All right, so it's starting to look like a mosaic. Now you can set your ruler aside. And now starting on some po points of lines, doesn't always have to be the edge of the paper, you're going to draw kind of like wavy lines or curved lines to create more organic shapes. So in Frank Big Bear's drawings, he had a lot of geometric and organic shapes that broke up his composition or his whole drawing. So as you can see, I have a lot of different shapes now that are mostly organic. There are some geometric. Now there are some lines that maybe if there's a little messy, you can erase them and make them a little bit cleaner. You don't want anything too small. Please do not draw too many lines across your paper or else it's going to be a little challenging. They may be, uh, if you have too many, I would suggest you erase some. You want them to be about as big as how I have them here. All right. All right, before we start coloring in our drawings that we just did and that we just broke up with a bunch of lines, making a bunch of different shapes, geometric shapes and uh, organic shapes. So now we're going to talk about shading and how Frank Big Bear did shading with his colored pencils. Now, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to draw or color darker around the edges of the shapes. So you're going to want to press harder. And the trick to drawing these uh, to shading is by going in circles. If you can see really closely, my fingers are making the colored pencil go into small little circles. And I'm also getting lighter as I go into the middle of that shape. This kind of mimics the way that Frank Big Bear would color in his shapes. So I'm going in circular motions. Now this might be feel a little weird to you at first. I have been doing it for a long time so I'm a little bit more used to it. But try to practice going in circles and really blending in that shading. Now it almost looks like it's uh, lit up with a Nice highlight almost, like it's almost 3D looking, how Frank Big Bear did it. So here's another example. Remember to go in circles, I'm pressing harder on the outside, making it darker on the outside. And as I get closer to the inside, I am going to be a little bit lighter on my shading. And that is how I want most of you friends to do the shading. Now, one thing I do not want to see in your artwork is this, what I'm going to show you right now in this. When you go in different directions, and if you're really sloppy and you're not coloring in the lines, your craftsmanship or how you how well your art where artwork looks really really shows. I can tell if you took your time or not, and it's going to make me really sad. But if I see that you really tried, then it's going to make me happy. So another example of how to do the shading the best you can. Go in those circular motions, pressing harder on the outside. And it gets a little bit lighter on the inside. And really trying to stay inside the lines. That shows great craftsmanship.
Next, I'm going to show you how we're going to block in um, the other shapes because not all of Frank Big Bear's shapes were shaded in the way that I just showed you. Um, other, a, a lot of the other ones were um, colored in nice and dark, all right, and you couldn't really see any of his uh, like colored pencil lines at all. It almost looked like he painted it in. It was so smooth. So. I'm going to show you how not, right now, how not to color in your shapes. This shows me that you didn't take your time. I see a lot of white space and you uh, colored outside the line. This is what I want you to do. Press hard. Take your time around those edges. Try to get all that white space. Maybe it might take a couple of times to go over your color pencil drawing, but that's what I want to see. That's going to make me happy. Make it nice and smooth. All right. For this next portion, I am going to just kind of show you how I would start drawing my uh, Frank Big Bear drawing. So now that I showed you how I want you to color in your drawings, here is my example. So I'm starting with green and I am doing one of those nice lightly shaded in ones with the lighter inside and the darker outside. So again, I'm doing circular motions with my colored pencil. Taking my time, making sure I'm staying inside those lines. There, I'm making one that is nice and blocked in, nice and dark. Making it nice and crisp on the edges. So again, you can choose whatever colors you want next to each other. Maybe you want to think about complementary colors, which complementary colors are opposite colors on the color wheel and they look good next to each other. So purple and yellow are complementary colors. Blue and orange are complementary colors. And red and green are complementary colors. And you might see a lot of those colors together in a lot of everyday things. I bet you can think of some right away when I said those color combinations. 